Hi there, today we're actually going to get a, uh, a Z80 actually up and running and uh, we're going to use a, a nice little circuit here by, uh, what's his name sorry, Thomas Scherer and uh, basically what it does is it forces the processor to run a continuous array of knobs uh, by tying down the, the input, uh, the data pins so it'll just run up through all the addresses and so we've seen activity on the address pins then we'll know it's actually processing and uh, we know the process is good um, so without further ado let's uh, let's go to the board okay now <clears throat> what we have here is a um, is the Z80 in place with the circuit from uh, last time I'm not using this circuit today, just the, the small, uh, the slower one. And the circuit I found is done by uh, a gentleman called Thomas Scherer, uh, Z80, Z80 Info, Z80 .info I believe the website is. Anyway, this is the, uh, the schematic. Um, you'll also find a link to it in the, um, down below and basically we're tying all the data lines to logic zero and zero zero in hex is an op and uh, i'm not using the same clock he's using i'm using my own external but all pretty much all the same except i have a i have a cap on the on the reset circuit but anyway so this is what we have here so I have the address lines here well, they're in shadow because of the uh, the way the light is these resistors all tie the data lines to the ground and uh, those are the resistors for the uh, LEDs and reset button and then I also have the 5 volt power coming from daisy chain from this board and the yellow is the clock so what I'll do is I'll I'll put these in place. Oh, I hate these bloody trucker clips. Oh, I like to squirm around. Okay. <clears throat> now what I'll do is I will introduce the oscilloscope into the uh, the bottom corner here, and uh, that should be up now. Ooh. Okay. I'm using my uh, Microsoft webcam for that. Okay, let's bring on the 5 volts. Now, as you can see, there's uh, no activity that's... No activity at all. What did I do wrong? <laughs> um, no, this is embarrassing. Oh, okay. I must have uh, knocked the wire loose. Okay. And you can see the uh, LEDs flicker in there and on the oscilloscope the uh, on top you'll see the uh, channel A which is the original clock and uh, let me see what frequency that is that's at 33.8 hertz that's why it flickers so much and um, okay let me plug in my second channel and do this without destroying anything now I was picking up the 50 hertz uh, interference there now a gentleman of the name uh, John Cunningham uh, pointed me to a uh, a nice website which uh, explained how to get around the, the pro problems on uh, not website a video that gets around the pro problems i basically just um looped a a uh, paper clip to act as a spring to uh, short out that ring but that'll be for a different video okay let's let's do this what's going on i'm making a lot of noise here is that what's going on Hmm. Something's definitely going on. Right. 
Now these lines should be each have different uh, a different frequency. Now this one should be the fastest one. Oh. So I can clip that on. Okay, so that is my A0 line if I can do it without. Yeah man. As you can see it's hmm. It's not very helpful, is it? Okay, let's see if I can speed this up a bit. See the noise the line's very noisy, so it's it's constantly uh, constantly crashing on me. But this is at 130 something hertz. All right, let's slow it down again. Then. Let's go back down to 33 hertz. As you can see, this uh, this clock is somewhat different. So this clock is slower because it's um, it takes more instructions to. Uh, oop. All right, <laughs> I'm not having any luck with this today, but but anyway, you can see this clock is slower than. Uh, and say now oh, this one's going to be even slower there we go oh, let's see if I can manually set it there we go you can about just about to make it out All right, let's let's try this again. I'm mincing my words here. <clears throat> okay, so the input clock is at 33.83 hertz. Now, at uh, A zero, the clock frequency is 18.8 hertz. Well, it's drifting a bit up here. Okay, so here we have. <clears throat> Our uh, setup, but I'm actually now using the four megahertz clock because this one's way too unstable. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> let's see. Now I should be getting a different frequency. Okay, so the frequency we, we have on the input <coughs> is the uh, the 3.999 megahertz, and the frequency I'm reading from this to make sure it's uh, it's going well is 499 kilohertz. <coughs> Um, but you've got to keep in mind this is like an internal fetch si uh, cycle and everything and it's fetching the um, it's fetching the instruction which is hardwired here as NOP and then basically just running through the addresses <clears throat> Uh, 
Now, <clears throat> these will be descending multiples of this. So, like I said, this one is it's about 499 kilohertz, about 500 kilohertz. So this one should be about 250. Uh, Oh, actually, I'm getting more for some reason. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. <coughs> it's just this uh, scope is a little temperamental sometimes. Okay. So, A0. I am getting come on some trouble reading <clears throat> okay four hundred ninety nine point nine five three kilohertz and a one I'm reading two hundred and fifty Eight, so two hundred and forty nine point nine seven seven and a two I'm reading one hundred and twenty four point nine eight it's about one hundred and twenty five I'm reading <coughs> when it locks in now this circuit is uh, <clears throat> designed for testing that the Z80 is actually operating and if I was to uh, select a different address actually I could just probe it it will uh, it should get incrementally slower now what am I getting with this one nope. Yeah, sometimes I have to reset it. Come on, give me a nice signal to show. There we go, seven point eight one one seven kilohertz. Now <coughs> This is why we don't build microprocessor systems on a uh, breadboard. It is very, uh, very erratic and uh, error prone. But uh, as you can see, these are the three of these. So if I release it from reset, it'll start counting. You might see the top one flicker in a bit. But yeah, well, this is actually showing me that this Z80 is actually running off the clock. Um, which I already knew because I actually pulled it off this board. But, <clears throat> but yeah, I, I wanted to show you this circuit running. Unfortunately, it's not as, uh, not as elegant as, uh, as it is shown here, but it is working and, uh, yeah. Nah, I'm a little ashamed myself actually. This uh, video didn't turn out as uh, as nice as I'd want it to be. But there we go. Um, it's uh, it's proving its point that it is actually running, and that means we can now proceed on to uh, making a basic system up. Okay, so that was the uh, the processor running on the uh, breadboard. Uh, Unfortunately, this video didn't turn out as good as I intended. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, due to the noisy environment and the uh, the fact that breadboard wires are all antennas, then uh, yeah, it was a bit buggy. But that just shows you the perils of running microprocessor circuits on a breadboard. Um, but yeah, as I mentioned, the next video will be moving to uh, to like a prototyping board bit like this but hopefully tidier and um, we'll I'll basically be replicating this
part of the circuit, which is the uh, the clock and the reset and an expansion. So, uh, I don't know, of expansion headers going down, and then uh, we'll we'll hopefully work on our first ROM. Uh, I'm not sure if I should use a, <clears throat> might use a, a flash for convenience or might use an EPROM, but. That means we'll have to do wait twenty minutes between uh, between different programming sessions to erase it. But I'll probably do the flash. Uh, maybe if uh, successful and if we get it done quick enough, I might go into RAM straight away, or that might be for an episode afterwards. Uh, but also, actually, we do some memory decoding as well. But yeah. Uh, sorry it didn't turn out as good as I was expecting but oh well I I tried and uh, but you get the basic idea but anyway the links to the uh, to the website that I got it from and directly to the page is uh, down below uh, but yeah the Thomas Scherer he's been uh, he's been running that website for well so I don't think it's his website, but he's been he did that circuit, and it's been running for a while, and uh, it's one of my favourites, and it's a very useful amount of information there. Uh, I suggest you visit it. Uh, okay, until uh, until next time. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.